Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. I very firmly believe that XRP is going to be worth substantially more than it is today. In good old September 2020. Um, and there are a lot of reasons for this. And I want to be clear at the outset, I, I do not have a financial background. I am not offering financial advice. And you absolutely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm happy to just share my opinion because I could not be more confident about the long-term viability of XRP. There's a reason that I'm literally buying, at this point in time, I'm literally buying XRP every single day. And I, I'm not going to do that uh, in perpetuity. I mean, maybe over the next uh, you know two, three weeks, I'll scale back to what I've been doing prior to, to that. But uh, my gosh, what an opportunity, because XRP is legitimately being used today, and it's illiquid, which is what you want. You want something, like whether it's a, say it's a stock. If you find something that is a true gem, if you find something that could be just the next Apple, if you find it when it has a smaller market cap, there's going to be a substantially greater opportunity for asymmetric returns. And that's why one of the most important things to me, one of the most, and there's a lot to talk about, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but one of the most important things to, you know, for the opportunity to even be there is you have to be talking about investing in an asset that doesn't have a bunch of money in it already. Lower market cap. And XRP, my gosh, actually being used today uh, and technologically superior uh, to pretty much all the competition out there. And it's got a market cap of only a little over $10 billion. It's nothing. And so here comes this piece. And this is what I want to cover in this video. Um, there was a, a Quora question, which uh, reads as follows. If banks use Ripple for payments, but don't need to buy XRP, then who will buy XRP and why will its price increase? Does it make any sense to invest in XRP? Well, David Schwartz, who is Ripple CTO and co-creator of the XRP Ledger, responded to this. And this is from March 7th of 2018, so it's not brand new, but I love getting insight from David Schwartz anywhere I can. And it's not every day that he's talking in about, um, you know, or answering a question about uh, the price of XRP and rationale for adopting and how this is all working here. And so while the vast majority of my videos uh, that I put out have more so to do with like things that are more recent, I think these videos are a lot of fun. You know, I don't want to overdo it, so I don't do it too frequently, but I always enjoy when I have an opportunity to go back uh, when somebody points out something cool to me and just kind of go back through stuff that, uh, that David Schwartz has covered here. And this actually stems from uh, a tweet I was tagged in from Stephen Edwards. So I wanted to, uh, to give you a shout out, my friend. I very much appreciate this. And I just wrote, uh, answer to, if banks use Ripple for payments but don't need to buy XRP, then who will buy XRP and why will its price in increase? Does it make any sense to invest in XRP? So again, uh, uh, Stephen Edwards there, thank you very much for tagging me because this is indeed a good read. And so here was David's response to this. We believe that we've built a payment system, RippleNet, that's so much better than existing payment systems that banks will use it. But the payments still have to be settled somehow. And typically that's going to mean going through correspondent banks and Nostra Vostra accounts. This is expensive and slow. As RippleNet grows, there will be more and more payments that have no technical obstacles to being settled by XRP instead of the slow old way. Then, as we make XRP work for those corridors, and he writes in parentheses, as we've already done with XRapid for USD slash MXN, <clears throat> those payments can easily settle through XRP. And by the way, for those of you that are newer here, uh, first of all, welcome to the XRP community. But uh, when he wrote XRapid there, that, that's the old name for what is now known as on-demand liquidity. Um, and then he continues here. This solves the chicken and egg problem that stymied us originally. Very few banks were interested in a payment system that could only settle where XRP was usable. And very few market makers were interested in building liquidity when there were very few payments. If we're successful with this strategy, and XRP is used as a settlement currency for some fraction of Ripple net payments, that could set up sources of demand for XRP. Now, don't you think that matters? Can we just pause there for a second? Because this is a huge piece of why people in the XRP community kind of get it. 
And so while I, I still must insist that the liquidity has to be there for XRP to be used, when, once this happens, and it is happening in a rather organic way, all, it doesn't directly increase the price of XRP, but it instills confidence in the long-term viability of XRP, which indirectly affects the price of XRP. So I certainly suspect that long-term, um, as excuse me, as on-demand liquidity is built out, that's going to be a major factor. And I think that that's why so many people, when they realize that and how this whole ecosystem works, like, oh my gosh, we're at the beginning stages of this? Oh, I'm sorry, I got to take a drink of water. Yeah, it looks like it got me a little bit more of the COVID during this video. Sorry, guys, I do these all in one take, though, so that's not getting cut out. But uh, anyway, um, but that is it. Like, that is one of the initial reasons when I first discovered um, this all in late 2017. I was like, holy hell, I think there might be something to this. So you're talking about a solution for the train wreck that is the, uh, you know, the world of global cross-border payments and settlement. There is a solution technologically, and you can reduce the issues associated with trust by using a decentralized cryptocurrency with an open market value, like when said all heavy, I was like, "Holy hell, this is amazing here!" And so that then that is a key piece of it, and it is getting. So as long as I keep seeing this all built up, I'm going to be a happy XRP holder. If I start start to see things go south, uh, I will let you know. If I start to get scared or worried about the long term adoption of XRP. Uh, because think about it, if things were going south, if you as an investor, would you not want to know? So like, anyway, I couldn't be more bullish and confident. I'm just saying, uh, I'm I'm going to be as honest as as the day is long. If that sounds corny. Can I do that? Anyway, <laughs> on with this. So the rest of his answer reads as follows. The most common example I use is a company like Uber that has to make lots of payments around the world and benefit significantly from being able to make those payments quickly. If XRP is a settlement asset for corridors that end with currency that Uber holds, they can buy XRP at a profit by waiting for someone uh, to need to pay into one of the currencies they hold and delivering that currency in exchange for the XRP the sender bought. In other words, they wait for someone who needs to go, say, from USD to XRP to Mexican peso, and they provide the Mexican peso and take the XRP. They can buy at a profit because they are facilitating someone else's payments and making a spread. Exactly. And then he writes, then when they need to make a payment, instead of going, say, Mexican peso, XRP, HK, they can pay with XRP and only go XRP to HK, uh, HKD. This saves them one spread, reducing their payment cost. And this is, okay, so this is all true, and I've talked about this on the channel before. The neat thing is, although, yes, okay, so I, I, I totally true what he said here. Um, this saves them one spread. Totally true, and it reduces the payment cost. But the cool thing is, for this to work, banks don't actually have to hold XRP, right? Isn't that one of the cool, like, they, they literally do not have to, as long as there's sufficient market makers out there. Now, of course, holding XRP, if you're a financial institution, uh, you know, okay, I totally get it. David Schwartz is nailing it. Um, it, 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 it does make me wonder, like, are banks ultimately going to do it for that purpose? Because it's just, I, I feel like banks are just so conservative by nature, and I get that, and that's totally fine. Um, we'll just see. It'll be curious to see. I'll, you know, I am curious to see how this is all going to unfold. Re either way, however it ends up working uh, or, or rolling out, like, the technology works unquestionably. And then he uh, wraps up by stating a few more things. Uh, he writes, Notice that this strategy only works if they hold XRP. They have to buy XRP when other people want to make payments and sell XRP when they need to make a payment. It takes a pile of XRP to adapt to the timing, and it's this adaptation that's the source of the cost savings. Uh, this could also mean they need just one pile of XRP instead of a pile of uh, Mexican pesos to make payments uh, in Mexican pesos, a pile of HKD to make payments in HKD, and so on. That can be a significant cost savings. That's just one way adoption of XRP as a settlement asset could cause significant increases in demand for holding XRP. And so what's he saying there? Look, what does that mean? Significant increases in demand. Well, what happens if demand increases in open markets where you can buy and sell XRP? Hmm, <laughs> substantially higher than it is. To, and that's why I opened the video by stating, and there are legitimate reasons that I believe XRP will more likely than not be worth substantially more than it is today. And again, like I've said before in other videos, I, I could be wrong and maybe it all goes to zero, but like, 
I don't. Here's the thing about life: like you don't get to choose what you believe. When you are presented data, either you're convinced of something or you're not convinced of something. And based on all of my research, because look, when I came into crypto in late 2017, I was a blank slate. I didn't want to believe anything. I was just absorbing data and coming to conclusions based on the data that I was absorbing. That's pretty much it. And so I, I'm, I'm just saying. You know, as, as long as I'm seeing real world adoption and as long as I understand how the ecosystem works to the extent I'm capable of doing it as somebody that is not associated with Ripple, of course, that makes it more difficult. I, I don't get to, you know, not privy to all the nitty gritty details, but as long as I can see with all the, the information that's publicly available to me that it's getting adopted, well, there we go. It strikes me in this way. And until the information being presented and that I absorb strikes me in a different way. There you go. But again, you don't get to choose what you believe and don't believe. Just like, and if you don't believe that statement, consider this. Are you capable of making yourself believe that 2 plus 2 is 5? Can you genuinely do No, you don't choose what you believe. You're presented information and it strikes you in a particular way. And that's that. And that 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 is what ultimately makes you believe or not believe something. Just the way it strikes you. And different people are going to have different understandings because their brains, frankly, work differently. But I'm I'm just sharing with you the path I've gone down. I've researched this for years on almost literally a daily basis. It's been rare where there's been a day where I, I haven't been either researching or uh, you know whatever something having to do with XRP and crypto. And I just could not be more confident because I believe that utility matters and will win the day. And I'm going to be patient. I don't know how long this is going to take. And uh, I'm sure a number of people will capitulate along the way. And that's fine. And people should do what they do. I'm never going to offer financial advice or tell people to buy or sell. I'm, I'm willing to share what I think and what I'm doing. Uh, to a certain extent, I'm not going to share how much XRP I hold. But to a certain extent, I'm happy to talk about these things. And... Uh, and, and to me, another part of the reason is in case I'm ever wrong about anything, I genuinely want to know that because if I believe something that is wrong, I would like to stop believing that thing that is wrong, especially if it has to do with where I'm investing my, my hard earned money. So that's where we go. And that's that's where part of the, the value of just having this back and forth and open communication uh, you know, with the rest of the XRP community is, is so valuable to me. And, and it's just a, a blast on top of that all. And that's why I love running this channel. It's just, it's my most favorite hobby for a reason. Ain't no fooling on that front. So um, let's just keep sharing ideas. Let's keep doing this thing. And if, uh, if any time you think I'm, I get something wrong, then, then let me know. Because look, I, I'm not somebody that's uh, just going to, uh, you know, stick my head in the sand. Like for me, um, I just want to believe as many true things as possible, and that's why I, I just operate in good faith, and I appreciate when I believe that I'm communicating with somebody else that's doing the same thing. You're operating in good faith because that's how you get to truth. And if you're in, in, behaving in such a way that you're 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 willing to just like protect what you perceive your rightness to be over what reality is, you're doing yourself a disservice there. So. That's why I'm always willing to be wrong, but you got to prove it to me. And I don't decide whether or not I believe you. I'm, I'm just, it strikes me in a way. And it's the same for you if you're listening to this. You don't choose what you believe. It will strike you in such a way that you're like, yeah. And I, I can't help but believe that's true or, or, or suspect that it's likely true, whatever the case may be. But uh, again, as far as XRP, man, what a fun ride this has been. It really has been. I, I understand. Like, so like, I've been here in the world of crypto almost three years. And the vast majority of the time has been a bear market and I'm still having a blast. I'm just accumulating my XRP. I think I know where this is going and I am so thankful I've had this time to learn and uh, and do what I've done. I, I, I've done what I think is right for me. So uh, there we go. And made some friends along the way. How about that? Hope I get to meet some of you in person eventually. Like we gotta, we gotta do once this uh, pandemic nonsense is over, this dumpster fire of year 2020. We gotta do something and, uh, and and get together and throw back a few drinks or something, talk about crypto and XRP. That would be a blast. I would really love to do that at some point. But I'll wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say. All right, that would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.